In this lab, we're going to look at the integumentary system model. And as you remember, the layers of the integumentary system are the epidermis, which is made of stratified squamous epithelium, the dermis, which is predominantly dense, irregular collagenous connective tissue, and the hypodermis, which is made up of predominantly adipose tissue. Now, if we go closer, to the epidermis. Now, this particular model shows thick skin. Okay, so thick skin. And I have a little bit of issue with that because in thick skin, you typically don't have hair. Okay, so we'll just close in on it right here and we can see the different layers. This is the stratum corneum. This is the stratum lucidum stratum granulosum, the stratum spinosum, and the stratum basal. Now, if you remember, the thin skin is missing the stratum lucidum. So that is missing in thin skin. Again, however, this, this model shows all of those layers. Looking at the dermis, we have two layers of dermis. We have the papillary layer and we have the reticular layer. Now looking at some of the structures, right here we can see a hair. And if we look at the cross section of the hair, we can see in white there the medulla of the hair. We can see in the brown, that's going to be the uh, cortex of the hair. And then the yellow would be the cuticle. And down here, this would be the hair bulb. And the hair root is everything below the surface and the hair shaft is considered what protrudes above the surface. In this case, we don't have any hair protruding. Now the gland that we see right here is a sebaceous gland. Sebaceous gland secretes sebum, oils, and it pushes it out into the follicle. And one thing that helps push that oil out onto the follicle is this muscle right here, the erector pili muscle. When that contracts, it'll push up against the sebaceous gland, pushing oil out um, again along the hair shaft in the follicle uh, until it gets put out onto the surface of the skin. Uh, another thing that that erector pili muscle will do, and by the way, it's smooth muscle, so we have no conscious control over it. But the other thing it'll do is cause the hair to stand up. Now for humans, uh, typically what that will do is give us goosebumps. In other animals, um, it'll cause the hair to raise up to give them some insulation when it's cold or to make them look much larger. Now, if we get a little bit closer here, we can see a touch receptor called a Meisner's corpuscle, and that's used for something called two-point discrimination. For deep touch, we'd have to go down here to this, which is a Pacinian corpuscle, also called a lamellated corpuscle. So Pacinian or lamellated corpuscle. One thing to remember, too, is that the epidermis, being an epithelial tissue, has no blood supply of its own. But we do see a lot of capillaries here in the papillary layer of the dermis. And looking at sweat glands, the sweat gland 
is exiting at the top of the of the skin. If we follow it down, there it is. If we cut through it, this is what it would look like. Now this type of sweat gland is going to be your Eccrin or Merecrin type of sweat gland. This is going to be the more watery sweat. Unfortunately, this model does not have an apocrine sweat gland. If there were an apocrine sweat gland, it would most likely be deeper in the tissue and the duct would actually come up and attach to the hair follicle. And that's going to be your thicker sweat, which again, it's the thicker, smellier sweat, um, but that will come out through the hair follicle, out onto the hair.